TNF inhibitors are a class of medications that have now been on the market for 20 years uh, that have really revolutionized the management of inflammatory arthritis. Uh, these have uh, medications are what we call biologics, which means that they are very specifically targeted to one part of your immune system um, and are delivered in a specific way, which is basically on what looks like an antibody into your body. These are things that, um, medicines that you take as an injection or an infusion. They're not pills like you can take um, for a headache. Uh, so they uh, work in a very unique way. They target uh, the tumor necrosis factor alpha, which or TNF alpha, which is a specific component of your immune system that drives inflammation. It's been shown, and it was shown for years before that these drugs were developed, that having high levels of TNF alpha was associated with high levels of inflammation in the joints of patients with rheumatoid arthritis, as well as just circulating in their body. So because they knew that this TNF-alpha was specifically part of the problem, uh, they developed a drug specifically to target the TNF-alpha. And what actually happens is the, the little tiny drug goes in and attaches to each little TNF-alpha um, in your body and blocks its activity. So it really just targets one part of your immune system as opposed to more general um, attacking your immune system, which a lot of our other medications um, and older medications in particular do. When we think about TNF inhibitors, we um, think about five different drugs. There's the two original drugs, Atanercept and Infliximab. Um, infliximab is the main one that's given um, intravenously. Uh, we have um, Adalimumab, which came onto the market a few years later. And then we have Golimumab and Sertilizumab, which both came on the market uh, last, about the same time. I think of their effectiveness as basically being the same. Interestingly, some patients respond to one and not the other, and we don't really have a prediction as to which patient's gonna do best on one versus a different one. And interestingly, you can put one patient on one drug and then it doesn't work, and then six months later you put them on a different one of the TNF inhibitors and it works great. And then you try them on a third one later and it won't work, and it, so it's strange to us. We don't really understand why some people respond and some people don't to one another. But I think of them from an effectiveness standpoint as fairly interchangeable. Um, when you look at the drug trials that they've done, all of them have a similar range of getting people into um, decreased disease activity and into remission. So the way we think about how to sort of decide who gets which one is just on a couple of factors. So one is how it's delivered. So as I said, infliximab is an IV medication. So if you don't want to give yourself shots, then um, infliximab would be a great one to go with. Um, if you don't want to come in to the office and get an infusion, then you'd want to go on with, you can get shots. So etanercept, um, adalimumab, golimumab, sertilizumab, all are shots that you can do at home. Um, the next thing that we sort of work from is um, about their uh, safety in pregnancy and the data that we have about that. Um, they all are thought to be relatively safe in pregnancy, and there's really been no data to suggest that any one of them is unsafe in pregnancy. Um, we know, however, that some of them across the placenta in the second half of pregnancies, and sertilizumab does not. So we know that because of the structure of the drug, adalimumab, golimumab, infliximab in particular, um, are move across the placenta into a baby um, during pregnancy quite rapidly, particularly in, in the second half of pregnancy. We know, however, that sertilizumab, because of its structure, does not cross the placenta, and therefore um, some patients feel that that's a safer choice during pregnancy. All TNF inhibitors really share the same risk profile for patients uh, outside of pregnancy. So um, the main thing we all get worried about is that um, taking a TNF inhibitor will reignite a tuberculosis infection. Doctors will always be checking your tuberculosis test prior to giving you uh, one of these drugs because it's a specific infection that can be um, reignited in your body when you take these medications. The risk of infection from other bugs, the flu, pneumonia, skin infections, sort of the infections that are a part of normal life, 
can be more significant and more severe in patients taking a TNF inhibitor. So we will be more inclined to see that these patients might need antibiotics to knock out um, what started as a cold that everybody else had. Somebody on this medication might end up with a mild pneumonia. Um, so it, it can worsen infections because your body just isn't as good at, at fighting them off. There are um, other sort of rare side effects that happen very occasionally. Uh, the best news, I think, is that the data really supports that TNF inhibitors do not increase the risk of cancer. That was um, a very uh, large concern when these first came on the market, um, but that really hasn't borne out in the last 20 years of data collection. We have not seen spikes in uh, the frequency of cancer in our patients who've been taking these medications, which is very reassuring. One other thing that people often will call about is that they get an injection site reaction. So it's, it's very common, so certainly not all patients get it, but when you give yourself an injection of a TNF inhibitor, sometimes people get a one to two inch diameter, maybe three inch diameter sort of red welt in the area, and it happens a day or two after they've done their injection, and then it goes away usually by the time the next injection is due. It's often itchy, um, and it's red, and it's raised, and it looks pretty angry. Um, and then it, it goes away. This is sort of a common thing that we see. It doesn't seem to impact um, the long-term effectiveness of the drug, so it's not like you're making something against the drug that's gonna make it not work. Um, it never turns into a big, all over the body um, allergic reaction. It's just always a local reaction. And actually, fortunately, sometimes it just eventually kind of goes away. So you'll have it for a few shots and then it'll go away. We treat it with things like topical Benadryl and um, that sort of thing, um, and maybe ice. But it's one of those things that happens with, some, with TNF inhibitors in some patients, but it's certainly not a reason to stop them.